Alrighty, so let's imagine we have an installation going on and you have definitely more than one um, screen that will be displayed and more than one instance running of touch design. And for this example, it's going to be super simple. It's going to be a uh, text displayed on a background color. So far, so simple. Um, you can imagine, for example, something like uh, a way system showing people where to go or something in this direction. Or let's imagine you are, you're using web services and you want to put in an API key and you have several computers running the, the same installation, but they are all going for different endpoints. Or um, you have a development server that you're connecting to, but then afterwards you want to connect to um, to another server, to like a production or staging server. So it would be nice to have a way to um, define values like this outside of the actual touch design example, because this way the only thing you have to do is you have to develop the whole touch designer project only once. And after that, um, you only have to distribute um, a JSON file. And this basically is where the JSON config component comes in. So you can get it at the OLIP. I just uploaded it. And it has two, um, it has another trick up its sleeve. And this is the use of environment variables. But I'm going to come to this later. So I created like this super, super bare bone um, touch designer project, which you can see here. And it, of course, contains, yeah, like a text and the background, as I told you. So let's say we have three screens in total, and all the three screens have different, um, have different background colors. So what you could do is like you could <laughs> save out one toe file for all of them or what else you can do is you use a config file so here i have a uh, folder and it only contains the context example toe here in this case and yeah basically grab the json config component either from uh, the olib website directly or like i do simply use the OLE browser. I already have it open, so we're going to press place. And as you can see, it already is um, having some values inside of here. So let's go over the parameters first. Um, you have a read-only parameter, which is the environment, and this is more for your information for debugging, because the environment variable will not be set inside Touch Designer but I will show you how. Then we have the environment variable that we are looking for, in this case, TDN environment, but you can freely define it yourself. And then we have a path to our config JSON. In this case, normally it just lays in, in the root folder of the project, but if you have your own folder, folder structure, no problem, uh, just put it in somewhere uh, yourself in your own structure. And we, of course, have a reload button here. So now, again, I, I just showed you the project file. And as you can now see, there is a config JSON. And if we double click here now, we see some JSON text. So in this case, default and production should, of course, be production in this case. And the way it's going to work is like, it will first down um, parse the default here and take all the values and expose them. And afterwards it will look if we have a um, another dictionary inside containing uh, the environment. So for example, if our environment is set to production, um, it will overwrite the full value with uh, replaced in this case. So, but for our project right now, we will test out something else. So uh, first we're going to use the default values here. We're gonna replace them 
and we're going to write in the text. This is a text from the config file and we will give it a background color and then we will nest a um, another uh, item into it so we will call this one red and we will set red to one we have green we set green to one and we have blue and we will simply set blue to zero in this case and let's remove the typo here and we save all of this and if we now go back to our touch designer project and use the reload um, then you can see all right we have different values here inside so let's take a look how can we do it there are several ways. So one thing or one way how we can manage all of this is we can simply place text. And what we can then do, so we, let's, let's call this config. And for example, what we can now do here, we will put in a Python expression and we will write op config one is the name in this case. And we are looking for the text and we are looking for the value in this case. So let's press enter and now we see, okay, this is a text from the config file, quite easy. Just for readability, let's put in the auto fit always so we can see the text. And another way is um, basically that all of these members will be also exposed as a uh, value, as a attribute of our config component here. So what we can do is when we go into our constant here, we simply write in op config dot and then we're looking for background color and then we're searching for the R member and we do the same for the green member and we do the same for the blue member. And as you can see, we have a super nice yellow value. Let's uh, change some values here. So let's set the green also to zero and maybe let's set the blue to 0.5, 0 0.5 here in this case. Let's save this. And now we can uh, simply press the reload. And as you can see, the values changed. But this is not per se what we are after um, because these are all still values that we can easily set um, in the project itself using like a constant chop or custom parameters and stuff like this. So let's uh, dig in a little bit. Let's um, save the whole project and we're going to close it now. And what we now can do is we can define another set of additional parameters. So in this case, let's name this one uh, let's just name it example. And what we're going to do in example is we're again going to define a text. And now we're going to say this text got replaced by our environment. And that's basically it in a way. But um, Let's open the file and see what actually happens here. So of course, take a little moment and we're loading, we're loading and we're loading. And we still have the original, this is a text from the config file. So what can we do? We know that we are looking for uh, the tdenv environment variable to know which environment we are currently in. So there are two ways to do that, relatively simple. So the first one is we are going to uh, go into our project here, simply going to copy the path here and we are going to press Windows uh, button and R to open our um, execute. And we are going to simply put in CMD to open our command line here. 
And now we can say uh, CD and we're going to pass in the path to our folder. Quite easy. And now we can say, for example, uh, set TD underscore ENB. And we're going to give it the value of example. And now for this session in this command line, we set the environment variable and everything we start from inside of this command line is going to be executed. So uh, if we type uh, start config example .to, we will now start our project here. And ta -ta -ta, off we go. And now we can see, okay, this text got replaced by our environment. But typing this in every time, opening the command line, going to our environment isn't the best ideal way. Instead, you could, for example, write a BAT file to write all of this code by itself. But to be honest, this goes also kind of against the idea of um, having different computers behaving differently for the same project. So let's close this one here. And instead, let's open a new command line. And what we can now do is we can execute set X. And what we can do with set X is we can define an environment variable per computer and it will stay. So even if we close this command line session and even if we um, restart the computer, it will always stay the same. So this way we can give Identi uh, identities to different computers. So we call it uh, like this, um, set X TD ENV, and then in um, uh, quotation marks, we give it, in this case, the example value. And then it says basically, okay, success, um, the value got saved. And again, now if we start our project here, load a little bit and afterwards we can look inside and then we can see okay this text got replaced by our environment perfect this is kind of what uh, we are after um, and maybe now let's create another example so this one is uh, not pink but instead we want to have a green background so let's name this one forest so uh, we say text and now we say this is a nice forest and again we take the background color, I have to give it quotation marks here and now we say okay R is going to be 0, green is going to be 1 and blue is going to be 0.2 or maybe let's give it a value of 0.1 and we save all of this so now if we would start the project it would still load all of the information from example so instead let's go back to our command line and again let's call zx td environment and let's give it the forest as a value so we hit enter value got saved and we restart our config example loading 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 and as you see voila we got a very nice looking green custom text totally dependent on the computer you are executing it on and that's basically the whole spear of this component so um, I hope you find it useful Enjoy the component and uh, good luck.